I finally figured out how to make a good looking pixel art shader with shadows. We're gonna talk about it right now. So this is what I've created. I'll go ahead and show you some of the inspirations that I've used to create this uh, and then quickly go over the shader code, which I will put in the description so that you can check it out. I came across this shader on a YouTube video that I will also link. It is a shader that uses a height map to generate these islands. And it uses the cursor position as the sun direction. It's pretty cool and does exactly what I need in the sense that it uses a flat image to generate shadows like it's a 3D object. So I adapted it to this. So if we open up our gun sprite here, First, let's look at it without the shaders turned on. It's pretty basic, just the flat image. Turn them on, you get the shadows, you get the emission, all that kind of stuff. We'll go through the different inputs here. You have an X frame and a Y frame. These tell it what frame of the sheet we're on. So it's the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Then how many frames on each axis we have. So six by six, the sun's position. So as we move it around, shadow changes uh, and you can set this programmatically the glow color so I can change this to change the color of the glow in the middle modulate color which modulates the color of the entire thing because when you're using a custom shader the modulate here does not work so then you have the height map which you can see here and the emission texture, which you can see here, is just this section on each frame. And then that's it. If we then go into our shader editor, we'll quickly breeze through this. Here's where it sets up everything. This is the original get height code from that shader we looked at a second ago online. But I realized that some of this is not necessary for what I'm trying to do. So I simplified it down to this. The vertex starts out by adjusting the area of the sprite that we're using. So first of all, we have the vertex here. I know it's the last thing, but just bear with me. We're setting the vertex to be four times the size. What that means is we're taking the sprite and we're actually extending its bounds to be four times larger. The important part about that is it means that our shadow can actually go outside the bounds of what the texture would normally allow. But if you just multiply the vertex by four, you just grow the whole picture. What you need to do is keep the picture the same, but extend the bounds outward. So you multiply the UV by four in the X and Y direction to kind of explain this. The vertex is on a scale of zero to one, and it's the size of the mesh or the uh, object that you are painting this texture onto. UV is zero to one in both directions, but it is where on the coordinate plane of the actual sprite you are getting stuff from. And so what you have to do is adjust the UV to get just the portion of the picture you want and make it the size you want. So what we do, we calculate the frame size by getting the number of frames on each axis and dividing by one. In this case, it's one sixth for the frame size. Uh, so 0.1666666. Uh, and then you have that times what frame we're on. And then you add or you subtract a quarter in each direction because by default, this will put it in the top left corner. And so you subtract one quarter. Then we have the fragment. So the fragment function is the function that actually processes getting the color of each pixel. So we have our UV that we edited up here in the vertex. We're getting the height of 
the pixel at that using this texture. The brightness determines how high it is. Black is as low as possible. White is as high as possible and everything in between. The step size is determined by this and that just is for ray casting towards the sun. We set up some information for the sun. If you see sections with these uh, if, if else, what's that, what that is doing is making it so that if we are outside the bounds, we don't consider the height. But we'll talk about a few more of these. We set up our in shadow system, which is basically what percent in the shadow it is, if that makes sense. Then we start to loop. We're going to get the height at the current pixel, which will just be the same as the height that we already set within P, but that isn't super important at the moment. We're then going to compare the two. Right now, they'll actually just be the same height, so it doesn't matter, it's gonna skip it. If H is higher than P on the next loop, we're actually going to set in shadow based on that. However, you see here, we're checking if we are within the frame of the texture. So what we want, we want our shadow to be able to extend outward. So we don't check that when we are doing that up here. What we don't want is to have the height map outside of our current image affect the shadow in here. If we're outside the current frame, we set the shadow to zero because we don't want a shadow. If P, if the height of the pixel we're currently on, so let's say it's this pixel, if the height we're detecting is one, nothing will ever be able to cast a shadow on it. So we just skip. Here's where we set P again. We get the step direction, multiply it by the max step size and we determine how far to move by saying what is the difference between these two multiply it by this and basically that's saying okay h is still lower than p but we're it's getting closer so we're going to take smaller steps because that likely means there's a slope that we're getting closer to here we are doing the emission textures so the way this works is there is a white pixel where you want emissions to happen at and we're basically adding the color onto that white giving us a color value higher than one on multiple channels which means that hdr detects it as glowing and that is what we see right here we'll look at that more in a second so we're taking the emission color which comes from the emission texture we're multiplying it with the glow color and adding it to the color so it all layers. Then we have our normal shadows, which are calculated via normal map, which we have up here in our normal map, but we can view it right here. Which one? If you don't know how normal maps work, look down here real quick. This is the color of flat. This is the color of slanting more and more upward, more and more left, more and more down, more and more right, and everything in between. So if you kind of look at this, you can see, oh, that's, okay, yeah, that's the direction each of these are facing. That's how a normal map works. It's basically telling the lights, hey, this is a flat surface, but it actually faces this way, so bounce this way. Then we're checking if we're outside the frame again, because we don't want the normal map to show up outside the frame. Down here, we're setting up our sign distance field system. So sign distance fields use light occluders to determine a distance from an object. So we've create, I've created this triangle shape. As you can see, the shadow actually fades and it's because we're multiplying by the distance from this shape and there you go uh, i'm gonna have to adjust how this works because right now this really only works because we're we have the sun pointed in the same direction at all times then we have to actually use the shadow 
we're going to adjust in shadow based on the sign and distance field information that we just calculated. Then we're going to multiply it by the color, shadow brightness, and color white to adjust the actual color of this. So if you notice, this is slightly transparent, so we're actually just layering the shadow on top of the color. I think if we get rid of this, you'll see, yeah, it just layers right on top of it. You can also adjust the color by make this all 0.4, yeah. So it's a lot darker, but you can just do that and it will assume that they're all the same. Cool. If the color is mostly transparent, we're really comparing to try and get it to say, hey, this is completely transparent. However, matching against zero with floats is not a good idea, but we're going to set the shadow color to be a flat color. Then if shadow color is close to zero, we're gonna go ahead and clamp it to zero on transparency. That way we don't have like weird artifacting at the edges. Then we mix all those colors together. We're going to add in the modulate color if necessary. And then we actually can probably just remove that now. Yeah, we mix in the modulate color, which if it's set to white, does nothing. So that's, that's the entire thing. If we come over here to testing, you'll see what this looks like with a viewport setup. Uh, we can also turn off the directional light. We can turn off the glow. Let's get a better look at just the pixel art. So if you don't know, some viewports can be used to clamp everything to being exact pixels, which is why even the shadow that is not pixel art, as you can see, is now clamped to being like that. We'll save this real quick. There we go. And then we can turn this back on. And there we go. Yeah. So that's pretty much the whole thing. Uh, like I said, I'll put the shader code in the comments. I will link to that video that I got inspiration from. Oh, and keep an eye out for an announcement on some stuff coming up, some game related stuff. I'll have a great day. Check out this video. See you in the next stream.